opportunity to recap the events road safety wise uh, that occurred in Queensland over the, the year 2012, the year just gone. Um, there's been some highs and some lows, it's been a mixed bag. Uh, unfortunately, 279 uh, people died on Queensland roads, a combination of motorcyclists, car drivers, truck drivers, pedestrians. But the important thing is each of them had family, each of them had friends. 279 people are no longer with us that were with us this time last year. That total is 10 higher than for the same period last year. So it's, it's, it's a sad thing, it's a sombre figure. Comparatively speaking, it's the third lowest uh, road toll in Queensland since accurate statistics were counted. Um, that's a very good thing. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it has been a very, very bad year for so many families and so many friends on, on Queensland roads. Now what is important of course is that we're now in the Christmas uh, road safety campaign, so that's Christmas and New Year, and that will run up until the 3rd of, of, uh, of this month. Um, so far, five people have been killed over that time. It's tragic to lose anyone on the road, it's especially tragic to lose someone over on the road over the Christmas period. Uh, it makes future Christmases so much harder uh, for family and friends. We would urge people, uh, as they think about their return, to work, they think about their return after the Christmas holiday break, to please approach your driving carefully. Uh, we've had far too many instances of people willfully and flagrantly putting their own lives at risk. Uh, so far in this Christmas holiday period, there have been over 50 people apprehended or photographed exceeding the speed limit by greater than 40 kilometres per hour. Now that's significant. Uh, one of the highest speeds we had recorded over this break, in fact over the last 24 hours, was a speed of 164 kilometres an hour on the Logan motorway. Now that's a dangerous thing, a very dangerous speed for people who are travelling out on the roads. Even more alarming, over the Christmas holiday campaign so far, over 600 people have been intercepted in relation to drink driving offences. And over 30 have been intercepted in relation to drug driving offences. So these are people who are willfully putting the lives of others at risk on our roads. And it's very important from an enforcement perspective that we mobilise all the resources we have to be in a position to apprehend as many drink drivers as we can. And I think the message from this is, uh, if you are going to be drinking and driving over this Christmas holiday break, you are at very great risk of being intercepted. But what's more important is that you're putting people's lives unnecessarily at risk. Do you have any questions you'd like me to run with? Uh, there was an incident uh, at around the early hours of, of this morning at an RBT site, as you said. Um, uh, in that incident, uh, we understand that a motorist initially complied with the requirement to stop. There was a conversation with the officers. Uh, we will allege that immediately following that short conversation, uh, a driver left that site at speed. Uh, the vehicle was subsequently dis disabled by means of a Stinger tire deflation device. The vehicle continued on for a brief period and later two men were apprehended on foot in the proximity of, of where the vehicle was left abandoned. Um, one person has been issued with a notice to appear for evade, a police, of, uh, evade police offence uh, and uh, another uh, male person was also given um, a, uh, an, a traffic infringement notice. Uh, in relation to the damage to police vehicles, there was no, no police vehicles damaged in that, um, in that incident. But of course our major concern is that if drivers fail to comply with instructions of police at roadside breath testing um, locations, they put our officers' lives at risk, they put other motorists' lives at risk, and of course they put their own lives at risk. Um, there is potential for things to go seriously wrong in circumstances when vehicles are being intercepted and drivers disobey uh, the careful instructions provided to them by the police. Well, I can tell you that, as with all fatal crashes, there's a full, comprehensive um, investigation that's undertaken by our forensic crash unit, and obviously there is uh, a great deal of work to be done for the coroner, given that two people have lost their lives in such a tragic way. Um, this happened in the early hours of this morning. Again, it happened at Silkstone near Ipswich. Uh, two people were killed when the vehicle, a vehicle appeared to have lost control. 
uh, crashed across a, uh, a footpath through a number of two, I understand, house yards, uh, colliding with a number of obstacles along the way. Uh, two people were killed as a result, and a third man was conveyed to hospital for treatment. Um, that person's condition, uh, we understand, is stable at this time, but of course uh, that is a, a very bad start for, for 2013, when only a matter of hours into the new year, uh, two, two people have been killed on our roads. I haven't got their ages with you. They were young males, uh, but I haven't got the exact ages with me. Do you have any I can't go into that. I don't have that information, but I, I, I wouldn't really be prepared to comment on that anyway. Well, the forensic crash unit will look at that in detail. At this stage, a number of lines of inquiry are, are, are fairly obvious to us. One, of course, will be the issue of excessive speed. Uh, whether or not there was excessive speed will be something the forensic crash unit will be able to verify, confirm as a result of measurements, etc. But at this stage, that is one of the lines of inquiry we're looking at. Well, I think there's a number of factors at work here. Um, one is that um, we have recently, um, I guess, acquired uh, new equipment. As you know, we have a, a fleet of, of uh, undercover covert vehicles that we're using. Um, our traffic cameras are being deployed on an intelligence basis and they're also being employed randomly, which means that there's a, a mix. The the underlying theory, of course, is an anywhere, anytime approach. So that, in a way, addresses, in part, the speeding, um, the use of our resources intelligently around the state, not just the regional resources, but also the resources from the State Traffic Support Branch, supplementing regional resources, um, we would like to think has a positive influence and a positive uh, uh, impact. Um, I would like to think, though, underlying all of this is hopefully an awareness amongst the community that um, driving a motor vehicle is an extraordinary, potentially an extraordinarily dangerous thing. The capacity for a motor vehicle to cause harm to other road users is, 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 is quite exceptional and it's probably the riskiest activity that most people will undertake uh, in their lives uh, given the potential for what can happen if things go wrong. Um, but the important thing is that 2012 is behind us it's finished, there's nothing we can do about that. 279 people are dead, and there are thousands of people who've been injured, some of them seriously. Everything from brain injuries, to amputations, to spinal injuries. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people out there who are going to go through the rest of their lives bearing scars from crashes that occurred in 2012. That's behind us, there's nothing we can do to change that. But what motorists can do, and what we as police can do, is ensure that there is focus on road rules, concentration on people, when the, the concentration on driving um, is, is one of the big things that we really need to get across to people. We have introduced the, the fifth of the fatal five, which is driver distraction, and we'd urge people to think about that carefully. It's not just mobile phones, it's more than mobile phones. It's all the other distractions that can occur in a car. Everything from adjusting settings through to, to shuffling iPods through to using mobile phones all potentially distract a driver and, you know, and negatively impact uh, the sort of concentration that a person needs to get through what is quite a complex task and becoming more so as our vehicle fleet and our population in the state increases. I can't give you that information yet. It's still being investigated. Uh, my latest information is investigations are currently being undertaken to establish precisely who the driver was, who of the three was the driver at the time. Just on other um, out of those things, considering that perhaps there are an increase in the sort of faulty misconduct, would you say that puts that an actual threat to the broader community? Uh, well, look, I don't have those statistics with me now, so I, I can't tell you whether we're seeing an increase uh, or not, uh, but what I can tell you is that you know, any one of these sorts of incidents, any one, uh, is potentially very, very dangerous and can lead to uh, one of our officers uh, being struck. Um, it can lead to a vehicle pulling out into traffic and causing a crash. Um, so there's a real potential for people 
to become seriously injured simply by not listening to the instructions provided by police. And it's a very dangerous thing to do in a situation like that. Oh, I think it's around about the 3 a.m. mark from memory. Anything else for me? All done? Thanks. Happy New Year, everybody. Look, thanks very much, everyone, for coming along and Happy New Year to you all. Um, I just want to give a bit of a wrap-up about New Year's Eve festivities across the state, in particular in the, um, the Brisbane South Bank area. Uh, last night we saw, um, we saw a number of festivities that ran across the state and generally um, the number of revellers were down on the, on the numbers we had last year. Um, as such, the number of arrests of offenders were down as well. And generally, um, we saw a very, very well-behaved um, community group in the various uh, party areas or uh, party precincts where events were being held. I think this is attributed to a number of things. Uh, one is the awareness in which uh, you people in media have um, facilitated our messages out to the community. I think uh, the joint, um, joint work with community members, groups, businesses, um, Brisbane City Council, State Government Departments and Emergency Services Departments in providing a safe environment for the members of the public has um, contributed to uh, what's occurred this year. Um, there were a number of incidents overnight. It was reported in the Courier Mail this morning about seven stabbings. Well, on looking at those incidents, um, we have, um, of the seven stabbings, there was five incidents, um, Harvey Bay, uh, Rabina, Caboolture. Of those, two were domestic violence related matters and three are matters where all the offenders have been uh, captured. The other three matters uh, will be alleged uh, in the victims and offenders were intoxicated. So um, those matters have been solved and people are currently awaiting to go to the courts with respect to them. And I can't comment on them too much further due to that, um, due to that occurring. Most of the arrests were made for public disorder, uh, public nuisance type offences, obstruct police, um, general sort of um, charges or which relate to entertainment type, uh, type events. So in summing up there, uh, we're very pleased with um, last night, the way it was run, the way the, uh, the public heeded our warnings, and uh, I think it was a pretty successful night statewide. What was the amount of people were arrested statewide overnight? Uh, I haven't got the statewide offences, but in the Brisbane area alone, we had Brisbane, let's see, Brisbane, that's the Brisbane Central District Entertainment Precinct and, and South Bank, we had only 62 arrests on 89 charges. Uh, Surface Paradise, where there's approximately 50,000 revellers, had uh, 184 persons arrested on 218 charges. And as I said, most of those offences were arrests for public nuisance type related offences. Um, there was a number of drug charges, but significantly low number compared to other street offence type offences. I haven't got the actual figures there, but what I can say is that the number of people out and about in those areas, Surface Paradise, South Bank, the Brisbane Central District, was considerably lower than last year, and as such, the arrests and charges were, were a little bit lower than, than last year. Yeah, uh, um, do you have a, an assessment in terms of, like, just from looking at the crowd flow and stuff and being up and down and these kind of sort of things, how much are you up to the potential for the incident? Well, the information that was fed back to us, um, Last night there was approximately 65,000 people in the South Bank area and I believe from last year it was around the 80,000 people there. Um, feedback from the Brisbane Central District, uh, the Fortitude Valley and the city indicates that it was, it was not much more than a normal Saturday night type crowd down there. Yes, yeah, the, uh, the media unit are on to that at the oh present okay. time, so they'll, uh, they'll have a bit of a comparison. They'll be putting in another media release shortly, comparing the um, stats from this year to last year. Yeah. Well, it's sort of safe to say that uh, the Gold Coast Police were what, busier last year in terms of the community? They were, but um, 
as I said, there's no major incidents down the Gold Coast in that surface paradise area uh, involving revellers last night. The other matters I spoke about initially concerning stabbings and that we're away from the entertainment precincts in the Gold Coast area or the surface paradise area and the South Bank, um, Brisbane Central District area. It's hard to make a comparison like that. Um, from what I saw last night, there was um, two sorts of crowds at uh, South Bank. We had the families and that, that were the present for the uh, 8.30 fireworks. And then we saw a um, dispersant of those sort of family members. And then an older sort of crowd, uh, less families at the midnight um, fireworks. Excellent. The, uh, the use of the public transport, um, the manner in which the Q Rail, TransLink and the buses um, emptied people out of the city worked very, very effectively. Uh, people leaving the South Bank area worked well. We had the Victoria Bridge closed down to through to traffic, but buses still had access there. At the conclusion of the midnight fireworks there, people complied very well in leaving that area. Um, a lot of people spilled into the City Valley area. Uh, getting public transport, also the trains over near the South Bank area were utilised. So I think it was a period of about 45 minutes that most people had dispersed that South Bank area without incident, uh, which was very, very impressive. It worked, the, the non drinking area at South Bank worked very, very well. Um, it was only a, um, I believe it was 22 evictions of people that were found um, in possession of alcohol at South Bank. So the message got out really well and the public complied um, with that um, message of it being an alcohol free zone. Is There was an incident at a private residence down there at, um, at Ashmore, it was a party, uh, where one male, um, he was uh, sustained injuries to the upper arms and torso, and um, he's currently in the Gold Coast Hospital, but three people have been taken into custody. Um, I'm not aware of four people being stabbed there at all. Um, three people have been taken into custody and assisting police with their inquiries currently. The stomping on the head was occurred at licensed premises at um, closing time at Upper Coomera. Uh, there was a dispute there between two patrons. Um, one male has been charged with grievous bodily harm this morning will appear in court uh, so in the future. Were there, um, a no, police media are following that one up. Um, we were advised about that before and police media are chasing that one up for you. From all accounts, uh, police media are going to um, touch uh, later in the day on, on what occurred in the regional areas, but from what I've been advised is um, very similar to what happened down here. Numbers were down a bit, the crowds were well behaved, and um, the, the night went off pretty well without too many hitches at all. No, and we've been asking ourselves the same question as to why it's down, whether it's the, the time of the, the week that New Year's Eve's fallen, you know, um, you know, the weekend and Monday being a work day where a lot of people are still away, um, whether the people have been away to other areas, whether people are staying home and um, entertaining with friends at home. Um, I couldn't give you an accurate reason as to why the numbers are down. Um, the services were certainly provided out there. Um, we had, as I said yesterday, we had extra police on duty we had free uh, train travel, bus travel, TransLink travel for revellers to get home. Um, everything was put in place and, um, yeah. But in terms of the grade, the grade, <laughs> what grade do you think was the best for those sort of performance, you know, that behaviour? Well, we're talking the numbers that I've just mentioned and the arrests. Um, you work out a percentage-wise, I'm not much of a mathematician, but if you, you work out the percentage-wise, I, th I think the grading and the behaviour of the public at these... Um, Sites, I'd be giving them at least an 8 out of 10. I think um, 
I think people have looked after their friends like we advertised. Um, we saw ourselves a number of people being led away by friends and, and taken away that were intoxicated. Um, the number of assaults uh, on victims within the entertainment precinct was very, very low. We only had one at South Bank. It was a bodily harm. And we had a robbery of violence in the city where two offenders were, were arrested. Now, those, those statistics are, are outstanding for the number of people in, in such a defined area. Those, uh, I think the message is getting out there. People just wanted to go out, enjoy themselves, enjoy the fireworks, enjoy other people's company, and, and that's what it's all about, celebrating safely. There is, there is um, some violent um, levels of violence out there, and again, um, you know, intoxication plays a part in that. But again, we haven't got violent offenders out running around the street. As I said, um, a lot of the violence um, that we saw last night in relation to the stabbings we've discussed in the stomping, the offenders have been arrested and charged or currently being interviewed. So um, I think um, it's it's a fact of life. I think. Um, where there's, where there's alcohol served, you've always got that possibility of uh, offences occurring. But in saying that too, I think um, liquor licensing laws and the, the work of licensees and security companies on licensed premises has significantly reduced uh, those type of things on licensed premises. Yeah. Are the regulatory uh, I, I couldn't tell you exactly on that, but police media will have something out later on when you better make your own judgment on that. Uh, it was a female there that um, had a handbag stolen. Um, two offenders left the van, grabbed the handbag and, and became, and the police um, located them. They'd been charged and their property was recovered. That was after the fireworks there this morning. Uh, I believe it was Adelaide Street. Yeah. But look, I think, I think the big thing to take away from it is the... Um, concerted effort of everyone, including you people in the media, and the support we get from the media, getting the message out, is very, very important. Um, the social media, um, getting the message out is important. I think a lot of people are taking notice of those media's and, uh, messages and, um, you know, using some common sense when they're going out. They're looking after their friends, they're looking after themselves, they're aware of their environment around, and it's quite encouraging to see the results from last night, considering the number of people out and about. That's right. Media, police media will send out a, um, a flyer later on to the media outlets, just just a comparison from this year to last year. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank you all. Okay.